Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Overcoming Graduation with Brian Drury, a show where I work to teach you everything I wished I had known about life to help you graduate to the next level in your own. And today is another installment of The Morning Commute, but this one is a little different. Normally, with The Morning Commute, what I do is take my commute to work in the morning to share a short but powerful lesson with you to help you kick off your day on the right foot. This one is the airport edition. I am in an airport in Denver, Colorado, on my way to the East Coast, going to be landing in Boston, then heading to Rhode Island for my cousin's wedding. I am absolutely stoked about it. Can't wait to see my family and my friends. And yes, I stay stoked now, now that I moved out to Southern California. So today's lesson is this. Chasing comfort is a lie. Today, I was listening to a YouTube video by Joe Rogan, and I know people have a lot of ideas or perceptions of Joe Rogan. You think about him back from his Fear Factor days and being this kind of shock comedy comedian or this guy who just does whatever to make the money, and the more I listen to him and the more I've seen his evolution, the more I've been impressed by him because he is a guy who back in the day was all of those things, but he talks about his evolution. He talks about how he hated himself, how Fear Factor paid him more money than he ever could have imagined. And it was just one of those opportunities that popped up and he's like, oh my God, this is multiples of what I was making in the past. I got to do this. Of course, the money's going to make me happy. And then, like so many people have realized, the money didn't bring the joy. And now he's doing things that are much more about enriching and helping people through their challenges and helping them grow into greater people versus having them do crazy shit for money. And you can probably hear the crazy buzzer in the background. This is an airport, guys. I can't control all the sounds. So part of the morning commute episodes, you get to come on the adventure with me. And he started to talk about this bullshit story that we're told. And we're told that we want comfort. That comfort is the most important thing in our world and in our lives. That Everyone is told this whole story that, hey, you should make as much money as you can so you can retire as quickly as possible. And then once you retire, you just take it easy, right? Make millions by the time you're in your 20s or your 30s. Retire on a beach and have a drink with an umbrella in it and a little piece of fruit, and you're golden. That's it. And you've done it. You have checked the boxes in life and game over. You just live out the rest of your days chilling on that beach. But here's the real interesting thing. We're all told to chase comfort. Most of us are chasing comfort. But what happens with comfort and complacency? When we have comfort and complacency, we get bored, we feel lost, we feel disconnected, and we start to fall into bad habits and routines. When we have comfort and complacency, we start to go, there's got to be more than this. And what most people do, rather than search for more in healthy ways, will just distract and numb. And we go, well, I don't want to live in this shitty reality, so let me find something that will take me out of it. And most people instantly ju jump to drugs and alcohol when I give these kind of examples. They go, oh yeah, he's talking about like cocaine, heroin, and maybe, maybe alcohol, but in excess. And it's like, yeah, sure, it can be those things. But there are so many different types of addictions that people don't address. We have accept acceptable addictions, things that our society deems as okay. So we deem them as less destructive, but they can be equally impactful to our lives. You might not look at Netflix as an addiction. You might not look at staring at your phone as an addiction. Oh, it doesn't put me in a rehab center. It doesn't distract me to the point. It doesn't destroy my body. Well, man, hey, we could debate that. Because that comfort, when things are so easy, Joe Rogan says in this short clip, and I'm going to make sure to include this in the show notes, it's a three, four minute clip with some wonderful inspirational music in the background. I had it on loop for a few hours at work today. And he says, there's no struggle anymore. Life is too comfortable. When we don't have struggle, we're not growing. If we're not growing... Life doesn't feel like it has purpose or meaning, but the thing is, we have to deliberately seek out that struggle. We have to deliberately do things 
that are hard. We have to deliberately seek out things that push us beyond what we believe is possible. Otherwise, we don't grow. We all think we want to get the big house and the cars and the money and the comfort, and then we can just chill and put it on coast, right? That we can all of a sudden take life that was hard and say, oh, it's not hard anymore. Now I've done the work, and now I get to relax. It is a lie. It's a lie we've been fed. It's a lie we continue to be fed our whole lives. And if we don't have people, in this case for me, in this moment, was Joe Rogan reminding me, that is not truth. That, that if you really want to make a difference for people, if you really want to deliver something impactful, if you really want to bring value, you have to continue to grow. My best teachers and my best mentors are not people who have learned the lesson, been done learning, and stopped. They are people who continue to learn. They are eternal students. They are people who say, you know what? The more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. The more I learn, the more I see that I can go deeper investigate a different facet of this that I never have and go into something that I never thought I could. When I'm learning about life, I want to learn from people who are continually fascinated by and curious about life. I want people who are 70 years old and are still learning and are stronger than they've ever been and are moving faster than they ever have and are loving more than they ever have and having better sex than they ever thought possible. You know, like, yeah, it's not possible. I'm like, yeah, I met those people. <laughs> I know them. They are real. And even if I haven't met the people in person, which most of them I have, I watch the videos, I read the books, I see these people. Because an interesting thing, in an interview I did on this podcast with Doug Stewart about the mentors that will change your life. He brought up a concept. He said, you need to introduce yourself to mentors. And he talked about the different types of mentors you can have in your life and where they serve their purpose and what types of purposes they serve. And as a young man, out of college, big student loan debt, not making much more than his debt, you know, not able to save too much. He's like, I was like, yeah, that's great and all, but I can't afford this. I can't spend time with all these mentors. I can't put $50,000 to meet Tony Robbins. Like, I'd love to. I wish I could, but I can't. So... I can't develop, I guess. I can't grow the ways I want to. I can't evolve into the person I want to be because I don't have the money. It's a very convenient excuse we hide behind. And so Doug started talking about this. Doug talked about how he was spending time with incredible mentors every day in books, in YouTube videos, in podcasts, in audio books. There are so many different forms. People have documented their wisdom and their knowledge because they want you to benefit from it. People don't spend all the time to write a book just because it's something to do. The people who really care, the people who really are serious about what they're doing, they do it because they have a message that they believe could benefit you and they want to make sure they share it with you and put it out to the world so that people have an opportunity to learn what they needed to go through the shit to learn. They don't want you to have to learn the hard way. They don't want you to need decades to learn it. And they put it down on a page. And all you got to do is seek out that page. All you've got to do is pick up the book and read the book. Because that's why they put it out there. And so we started to talk about mentorship in a way that was really about connecting with resources, information, ideas, YouTube videos, podcasts, free events. And so it started to help me reimagine this whole idea of mentorship and connecting with the people I wanted to connect with. It became this idea of, well, what ways can I connect with the people I want to? I may not be able to have a one-on-one -on -one sit down with Tony Robbins right now. One day I will. But what can I do right now? I can read his books. I can listen to his audiobooks. With my Amazon Prime membership, I get one free Audible credit every month. And if you didn't know that, it's fantastic. You can get a $30 audiobook for free, technically, for, you know, I'm doing air quotes, free. But if you use Amazon, you should have Prime anyway. That's an aside. But this whole idea of comfort and struggle, it's so comfortable to just sit on the couch, watch Netflix, order things on Amazon Prime, go on Uber Eats, order things. And guys, we've never lived in a time... There's been more comfort. There's been more access to comfort, more availability of comfort. Like, we're so comfortable that we're going fucking insane. 
you see it more and more. There's a reason that anxiety is going up. There's a reason depression is going up. There's a reason that people are facing these challenges more and more and they don't know what to do with it. Because for so much of our history, we've been battling to survive. We've been fighting through the challenges. We've been taking on everything that we've seen and going, oh, okay, well, I just need to find food today. I just need to find shelter. I just need to find a way to make it through the day so you don't have time to worry about any of this other shit because you don't have comfort, so you're pursuing it. Now we've got an excess of it. We have so much comfort. And you're like, well, it's not comfortable because I have debt and I have this and I have that. Yeah, but you're in an air-conditioned room probably right now or a car. Or you might not be, but you've got a fan and you've got a room. And that's the only thing you're like, no, 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 I don't have air conditioning. If you have a house over your head, if you have a roof, if you have four walls around you, there are so many people in the world who do not. You running water, so much of the world does not. And we go, yeah, 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 but, and it's like, no, don't brush this aside so easily. These are things we neglect, but when you travel around the world and you see people living in the street and you see the filth and you see the atrocities, the things that people actually go through day to day, it really helps you reframe what's important and what's not. And guys, I'd love to tell you that I always think about it and every day I recognize my blessings and that I'm so clear and I think back to the times I've been in different third world countries. I don't. I get caught up in the same shit. Oh, my Wi-Fi isn't that great today. My internet connection isn't great. I'm stressed about this. Work is tough. My standing ergonomic desk was this and there I got a lot of emails. Life is so hard. It's like... Fuck. It's not. It's really not. I heard both Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson today in different interviews I listened to and different clips I listened to talk about actively pursuing difficult things. Actively pursuing struggle. Because if our life doesn't hand it to us, let's go seek it out. And Joe Rogan says, even if it's just doing a 90-minute hot yoga class, do something difficult today. Don't just set it out six months in advance. Those can be great, though. But don't just wait for that. Oh, I'm going to run a mud run in, in September. Fantastic. What are you going to do today? What makes you uncomfortable? What's hard? What's challenging? Where are you building yourself up stronger? Because, guys, life will come at you. I'm going to say it again. Life will come at you. At some point or another, it's going to throw some shit at you that you did not see coming. There is going to be a moment where you thought, you were safe and comfortable and you could just stay in your comfort and you didn't have to grow anymore and you were done and you could just be on coast and holy fuck, something hits you that you couldn't even imagine. I thought I was killing it. I thought I'd never have to learn lessons again because I was in this amazing zone and then my mom gets diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. My whole world gets thrown out of balance, off its rocker. You say it however way you want to say it. I was just completely lost. But that challenge and that struggle has challenged me to grow into the best version of me and the best man I have ever been. Some of the struggles I choose and some I don't. But when you actively choose struggles and go seek them out, then when the real struggles, the unpredictable struggles come, you are better equipped to handle them. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Doesn't mean it's going to be a cakewalk. Doesn't mean you just suddenly go, oh, no big deal. Got it. It's fine but it means that you are better equipped. You have more tools in the toolbox. Instead of being the person who gets hit with a challenge and looks down at their toolbox and it's empty, you go, well, I got 20 different tools. I could choose to use any one of them. And here's the interesting thing, guys. Even when you have the tools, there's times where we choose to ignore the toolbox. There's times where we challenge our greatness. There's times where we say, you know what? I am as bad as my negative voice tells me I am. I'm not enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. And we say, that toolbox doesn't exist, even though we know it does, even though we can see it right there. So this podcast is about reminding you the toolbox is there, the struggles are coming. How are you gonna prepare? Do you wanna be the man or woman who is waiting for shit to come, afraid? Or do you want to be actively preparing for the battle? Because, guys, life is absolutely a fucking battle at times. We can try and make it picture perfect and try to paint this wonderful picture where everything's going to be smooth and if you get to the state of nirvana, that everything's going to be wonderful. But, guys, it's not always going to be. And I don't think it should be because if it was, if it was this wonderful, perfect state of nirvana, 
if it was this incredible thing where we just had to learn one thing and it was over, we're like, what would be the point? If it was that easy and everyone could do it and just figure out the purpose of life in an instant, what would be the point? We'd be done. We'd be, okay, got it. Cool, now what? But guys, there are so many miracles and magic. There's so many different things beautiful things for us to experience there's so many different epiphanies that we can have there's so many different things that we can see there's so much to learn there's an infinite amount of things to learn as part of the beauty there's part of the magic of it's part of the magic of life is that some kid will walk by while you're doing a recording and brag to his friend about doing the worm in an airport that's the magic but part of the magic is finding the joy in the little moments. Part of the magic is finding a beautiful message in your darkest darkness. Jordan Peterson says that in going into his darkest darkness, he found the lightest light. So the, it was the reminder I needed today is to not avoid the struggle, but to go into it, to find it, to actively pursue it. Because the way that things scare us is when we avoid them, because we give them power. By avoiding something, we're telling ourselves that if it came, if it attacked, if it hit, it would destroy us. So we avoid it, we hide from it, we try to pretend like it's not there, but we know it's there. We know the challenges are there. We know the fear is there. Rather than wait, let's go face it, let's train, let's prepare. Because I have heard people say, you don't rise to the level of the situation, you rise to the level of your training. You might think about that in sports or maybe in martial arts. It goes to your mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual fortitude. How much time have you spent building up your mental, emotional, physical, spiritual muscles? How much time have you spent building up and preparing for the battles that will come? Because there is much more peace when you know you're prepared or as prepared as you can be. There's much more peace when you know you've been training in jiu-jitsu for years, so if a fight did come up, you could handle yourself. Versus, holy shit, I've never prepared, and if that thing came up, I'd be totally lost. There's much more peace if you've been meditating for years, and a big challenge comes up, and you go, okay, I've got at least one way to deal with this. Or journaling. Or talking things out loud. Or taking a walk in nature. You have things that you can lean on in different situations. And an important thing to realize is the things that have always worked will not necessarily always work for you in the future. Things that had always worked for me, when my mom got diagnosed with cancer and when she ultimately passed away from cancer, the things that had always worked didn't do shit. Maybe they helped a little, but it wasn't anywhere near the help, the benefit, the release that I experienced in the past. So how can you prepare? How can you get ready? How can you anticipate the struggle? Get ready for it. Prepare yourself for it. Actively seek it out. Where can you create a little discomfort in your life to create infinitely more peace? Where in your life right now, if you thought of one area, where have you been avoiding the struggle and seeking out too much comfort? Where have you been getting too comfortable? And what is one thing you can do to seek out the struggle to set yourself up for greater peace, happiness, love, and light. And I'd love for you to take that action and tell me about it. Reach out, comment, reach out on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or shoot me an email. But I want to hear about what action you're taking to tackle the struggles in your life. Create them so they don't just show up. Create them so that when the unpredictable struggles come up, you're ready, you smile, and like Jocko Willink, you say good. I love you all. Thank you for listening today. If this message was of value to you, I would love for you to share it out to your friends and following to get this message to more people. Day after day, message after message, podcast after podcast, I'm working to get as much out to you as I can, to share as much as I've learned, as much as my coaches, mentors, books, audio books, YouTube videos, tutorials, coaching programs have shared with me. I want to get it all out to you so you can benefit from it and share with more people. So when you listen to this and you go, I benefited and this is great and this is fucking awesome and I'm so glad I heard this, there are people who need to hear this too. 
and I don't care whether it's my podcast or my episode or someone else's, share the messages that inspire you because trust me, people are watching and people need to hear it. Whatever it is, whether it's mine or someone else's, keep sharing the content. Be the positive change that you want to see in the world and spread the messages that need to be spread. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Stitcher. And if you want to reach out to me to talk about this episode, to ask me questions about it, to get feedback, to recommend interviewees for future interviews, to recommend topics for me to discuss, or just to reach out and say thanks for doing this. Whatever it may be, I would love to hear from you. You can reach out to me at brian at overcominggraduation.com. So guys, we are at... 11.20 p.m. Denver time. I'm on halfway through my trip. This is the morning commute airport edition. And we are wrapping up here. So I love you all. I want to thank you for joining me. I'll be talking to you again real soon.